Nestled in the foothills of the Swiss Alps sits one of the most advanced prefab construction factories in Europe. Rengli, a 100-year-old firm, builds high-performance, energy-efficient, modular structures. They use a variety of machines to automate construction like CNC's, suction cup lifts, robotic saws, tilting tables, gantry cranes, and more. I had a chance to visit the factory last month and it's fair to say that I was blown away by the precision of their construction, the high quality of materials used, and of course, the robots in their assembly line. In this video, we're going to walk through their steps of modular construction and the pros and cons of their process. The first machine is this platform system adopted from the automotive industry. Forklifts load drywall, timber, sheathing, and other large materials onto this base. They are separated into categories and stored on these shelving racks. As material is needed inside the factory, it is automatically retrieved from these shelves and carried down this highway system. Rengli's factory operates like an Amazon warehouse. Every piece of material is tagged with a unique barcode. This allows every component to be tracked, easily located, and retrieved by machines. They also have a huge storage facility with tagged lumber and engineered wood waiting to be used. Such an advanced construction facility needs highly detailed BIM models to drive their process. BIM stands for Building Information Modeling. Digital 3D models are loaded with information like the size and location of every part and piece. Rengli knows how large each wall panel is, how many pieces of lumber go into it, how many nails are used, where electrical boxes are located, and more. BIM models allow them to think of buildings as a kit of parts. They can also plan the sequence in which the panels are built in the factory and assembled on job sites. The second robot used is a CNC machine, which stands for Computer Numerical Control. Gypsum boards and wood panels are lifted from the shelving racks and brought to these tables. They slide into the sealed off CNC machine and are cut with router bits. Data from BIM models dictates the dimensions of each piece and the location of electrical outlets and plumbing. When the cuts are complete, the table slides out. Suction cups carefully lift the pieces to another platform. I was shocked by how little waste was generated during this process. Thanks to BIM models, the cuts are optimized for maximum output. All the small waste pieces are collected in bins and recycled if possible. I was also surprised by how clean and dust-free the entire process is. The CNC machine is connected to two exhausts, one for gypsum dust and another for wood dust. Two large tanks outside the factory store this dust until it is disposed of safely. Wood dust is actually burned in winter and used to heat the factory and the office. This closed loop recycling reduces landfill waste. The third machine is an advanced Hundegger saw. Large pieces of wood, some 40 feet in length, are fed into this fully automated machine. It can cut wood in five axes as well as drill screw holes, cut notches for mortise and tenon joints, and punctures for electrical and plumbing. Once again, data from BIM models dictates the cuts. Because precision is so important in off-site construction, Rengli only uses engineered wood like glue lamp beams. They cannot use warped pine studs with large knots. All the lumber needs to be perfectly straight and have consistent widths and thicknesses. Unique barcodes allow tracking and retrieval. All the dust from the Hundiger saw is also suctioned away, which keeps the factory floor clean. The fourth type of machine is a butterfly table. Workers build walls, ceiling and floor panels on these tables by attaching the milled glue lamps, sheathing and drywall. When it's time to work on the opposite side of the panel, the tables flip 90 or 180 degrees with hydraulic lifts. It takes just 90 seconds to flip these tables over and safely lower them on the opposite side. It's a simple but extremely useful device. Automating the repetitive task of flipping panels can prevent any potential injuries. Another cool aspect of these tables are metal pins that act as guides for wood studs. The pins automatically move to the right positions, which makes assembly easier. 
The fifth machine is a gantry crane system that spans the entire length of the factory. It carries building panels from one assembly table to another. Workers add thick mineral wool insulation in the stud bays and a layer of wood fibre insulation on the exterior faces. They also attach drywall to the interior faces with a nail gun. Plastic tubing for wires is also installed in the wall panels. While most other areas were fully automated, this final assembly section was still reliant on manual labour. However, unlike typical job sites, it was so organised and clean. Every station had a supply cart that was fully stocked. They had dedicated people making sure no one ran out of supplies. It isn't easy or cheap to build such an advanced modular factory. In order to compete with traditional construction, they have to be extremely efficient. They cannot afford to have people waiting around for materials or instructions. They need to run like a well-oiled machine. Once the panels were complete, they were lifted by cranes and flipped in the vertical position. Panels were stacked on transport platforms and draped with plastic. They are heat sealed to protect them from moisture. Outside the factory, they had rows of protected panels waiting to be transported to job sites. Unfortunately, the plastic cannot be reused in the factory again, but they send it to a recycling plant. As you can tell, I was very impressed with the way their factory was run. They have successfully managed to rethink construction and turn buildings into a kit of parts. David Rengley, one of the owners of the company, spoke about the importance of accurate BIM models on my podcast. I think what is very important to understand here is that prefabricated timber construction doesn't just start in the factory, right? I mean, in order for us to know what we're even going to produce, we need like very detailed plans. Um, today, this is usually a 3D model that has all the information about the, the building that we're going to produce, all the way down to where is your power plug going to be, where is your light outlet going to be. And with all this information in the model, we generate uh, CAD data that goes straight to the machines and therefore just makes the whole process very, very efficient and also very detail-oriented. David referred to the BIM model as a digital twin. He uses it to extract a material list and buy raw materials early. He is able to guarantee customers a certain price, unlike traditional construction that is more susceptible to price fluctuations. Rengli is also able to build panels faster and better. They don't have to worry about exposure to rain, snow and other elements. Another advantage is the ability to hire older and more experienced workers in the factory since indoor working conditions are not as harsh. They are also able to minimize waste because of careful planning and execution. The final advantage is the sustainability of wood construction. I usually get a lot of flack for saying this because there's an unfortunate misunderstanding that wood and mass timber construction equals deforestation. This isn't true. Wood has a much lower carbon footprint than concrete and steel. Rangli only uses sustainably harvested wood where a tree is planted for every tree cut down. They only use rapidly growing softwood and not hardwood. Rangli also takes sustainability a step further. Their factory and office are powered by solar panels almost all year round. Rengli has brought age-old wood construction techniques to the modern era with robots and automation. Another company that is shaking up an old industry is Masterworks, the sponsor of this portion of the video. They buy fine and contemporary art from a range of artists like Banksy and Monet and break it up into shares for their members to invest in. Of course, this does not constitute financial advice since investing does carry some risks. However, art has outpaced the SMB by more than double for the last 25 years. Masterworks recently sold six of their paintings and delivered 29% average net returns to their investors. Blue chip fine art was once reserved for the wealthy but is now accessible to everyday investors. They even speak to each investor to make sure art is right for them. There's a waitlist, but you can get priority access to skip the line by clicking the link in the description. Let's end this discussion with some disadvantages of modular construction. Rengli uses stone wool, which has a high carbon footprint. They build well-insulated, airtight buildings with massive floors, walls and ceiling panels. 
these buildings require less energy to run over their lifetime, but they have high initial carbon footprints. Their construction technique is obviously more expensive than the stick building here in the States because they use high quality engineered wood, triple glazed windows, 10 inch thick insulation and more. Finally, as successful as Rengli's process is, construction is a very difficult industry to automate because every project is so individualized. With Envy, we look at the at automotive uh, manufacturing plant and I mean, it's phenomenal what these people are doing and we wish our facility was as automated. But I believe the difference is, you know, if you produce, let's say, 100,000 doors for your, you know, whether that's your Tesla, whether that's your BMW or whatnot, but you do have so big numbers that it really makes sense to automate all these processes, to program a robot, to put in that specific door in that specific model in a very specific way. However, for us, when we design and, and uh, produce a building, we do and will have all individual parts. Yeah, It's not uncommon that not a single panel is the same as the other one in an entire project. So it's a lot harder to automate this because you cannot just simply program a very uh, certain step very uh, very efficiently but you basically would have to program the robots every single time unless you eventually get into more um, parametric way of thinking i hope our industry embraces modular offsite construction more and starts thinking of buildings as an assembly of products it's going to take a while and it's going to be messy but with companies like rangli proving that it can be done there's hope. Be sure to check my entire conversation with David Rangley on my podcast channel. I'll link it up here. Also, let me know what you think about offside modular construction and how it can disrupt the construction industry here in the States. I'll link my Patreon page in the description. If you can support me, I'd really appreciate it. A big thank you to everyone already supporting me. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe button, and the notification bell too. Thanks for watching. See ya.